So uh, every year since 1849, there's been a publication has come out called Who's Who. Um, and it's, it's kind of the names of all the great and the good. And if, you're, if, you got your, if you got into Who's Who, then you've made it. So um, I thought this morning, um, just to, uh, to warm us up a little bit, we would do a little Who's Who quiz. Um, so just, uh, just shout out the, uh, the names um, of, uh, of the person when you see them on the screen. Yeah, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, um, a very uh, famous uh, wrestler and now actor, TV producer. Hey, and he's fast and furious. And he's fast and furious, he is, Ralph, absolutely. Who's this? Bill Gates. Bill Gates, yep, um, founder of Microsoft, uh, philanthropist. What about this? Uh, right, right in there. I, I thought I would put that one in because um, he was on the island recently, Brian O'Driscoll. Um, Probably Ireland's most famous uh, rugby player. <laughs> Just for you, Ellie. Who's, who's this? Kylie Jenner. Yep, Kylie Jenner, um, media personality, cosmetics entrepreneur. Michelle Obama. Yeah, I just, just made it really, um, burst onto the, uh, the who's who list this year, Emma Raducanu. Yeah, yes, PewDiePie. Um, Swedish YouTuber, um, 110 million subscribers. Yes, that's Kanye West, yep. Special bonus point if anyone knows what Kanye West is now calling himself. <coughs> ye, yeah. Not yeah, ye. <laughs> Who's this? Yeah. <laughs> Could be, but no. Um, this, is, uh, this is Noah. Um, and uh, Noah, until, um, until a little while ago, was one of the cleaners um, who, uh, who came and uh, ke uh, cleans, cleaned our buildings and kept our... Um, our buildings here um, nice and clean um, and Noah is um, a follower of Jesus and so he he sees that as part of his his service to God you won't know who this is her name is Vicky she is a trainee hairdresser um, and uh, uh, when she when she is um, massaging the shampoo into people's heads she um, she prays for them and she sees that as her opportunity to share something of God's love with the, uh, the customers who she deals with. Um, and you pretty certainly won't know who this is. This is a guy called um, Duncan Dougal. Um, he, he was one of a number of men who, when I was a teenager um, in Falkirk Baptist Church, just discovering Christian faith, um, there were a number of men, including Duncan, who just modelled to me what godly manhood looks like. And so, uh, a number of different people on the, the list. The, uh, the first ones are pretty much what you would expect on, on, a, um, on a who's who list. And the, the ones at the end there may be a little bit less um, likely and also a, an awful lot less famous. You can tell a lot by a society or by an individual um, by finding out who are the people who they honor. Um, and when we come to this, uh, this list of Paul's, and this is, the, this is the last chapter of Romans, so we've got to the, uh, we've got to the, the end, finally, of our, our long series in Romans. Um, but this list of Paul's is maybe a little bit nearer these last three people than, uh, than the earlier people on the list. This is Paul's who's who. This is a list of people who, who Paul wants to honor. And right at the end of this gospel where he's been telling us, um, unfolding for us this glorious story of Jesus, he gets personal and in the light of this story of Jesus, who are the people who he wants to honor? Let's have a look. So, 
the first thing we can see is this, this is a really diverse list. There are Roman people, Greek people, Jewish people. Um, so he sees greet, uh, greet my fellow Jew, Her Herodian. Um, greet, greet Epinetus, the first Asian person to come to uh, faith in Jesus. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge diversity in terms of, uh, of class. Um, so uh, one of the persons that he, he lists here is a guy called Narcissus. Um, and Narcissus is, is one of the, the people on the list who we do actually know quite a lot about because um, the stuff written about him uh, in, um, in the kind of contemporary Roman uh, annals of the, of the time. And Narcissus was um, a rich and powerful individual who had quite a lot of influence over the Emperor Claudius. Um, and so he was somebody kind of at the, at the top of the Roman food chain. Um, and then there are names um, Ampliatus and Urbanus, um, and they were members of uh, the imperial household. They were probably middle or high-ranking civil servants. Um, so maybe you're sort of your middle-class uh, people there. Um, and then Hermes, Philologus, Julia, we think that they were probably slaves. So, in the church at Rome that Paul is greeting, he is, he is looking to honor people from all sorts of walks of life. Um, he honors singles and marrieds and parents and, and kids, um, and this is a little bit less definite, but probably Mary, Ampliatus, Philologius, or however, however Denise pronounced it is the right way to pronounce it, um, Tryphena, Tryphosa, uh, they were, uh, we think, um, single people, and, and Paul has a real heart, actually, for honoring single people, and, and he makes quite a big thing of that in, in 1 Corinthians, where he says that single people have the opportunity to devote themselves wholeheartedly um, in a way that, uh, that married people can't, and in particular to be able to devote themselves to God in a way that married people can't. Um, and then he goes on to, uh, to honor married people, and there's a couple here called Priscilla and Aquila. We meet them elsewhere uh, in Acts as well, and, and he says that they risk their lives um, to, to help him. And there's something powerful about when a married couple are able to serve God together. Uh, and in doing so, that kind of shifts the focus. It shifts us away from selfishness of saying to the other, you, well, you are here to serve me, or thinking that, um, but instead to both serve God and serve others um, through that. Uh, children, greet Rufus chosen in the Lord. Um, there's one other place in the Scriptures where the name Rufus appears, and that's in, uh, in Luke's Gospel, and, and we, we read of a Rufus um, well, we read of Simon of Cyrene who carried Jesus' cross, and he was the father of Rufus and Alexander. And we don't know if this was the same Rufus. It, it might have been, uh, but he clearly had a godly heritage chosen in the Lord. If you have had a Christian upbringing, if you are having a Christian upbringing, um, then just recognize how precious that is, that God has placed you in that context where you can have um, a godly nurturing and foundation to your life chosen in the Lord. And then parents as well, he, um, he greets Rufus's mother. He doesn't use her name, and, and in that society at that time, it was more honoring to an older woman not to use her name. So, that's the reason why th this is the only person whose name is not mentioned. And he says, she was also a mother to me, and within the family of God, there's that wider sense in which we can um, be uh, parents' children, in which we can support and love each other. So, there's this really diverse set of people that, uh, that he honors, and, and pointing out that in God's church, all the usual types of barriers, racial, class, social, um, station in life, whether you're married or single or young or old, that, that these, things are, these, these things are so secondary among God's people because we are all God's family, and so He honors this diverse bunch of people. Another thread that we see in this list is that Paul really focuses on honoring people who work hard in the church. 
So in verse 6, he says, greet Mary who worked very hard for you. Uh, we, that, that's all we know about this girl. We know that her name is Mary and she worked very hard um, for, the, for the church in Rome. We don't know any big or spectacular stuff, but for Paul, that, that in itself is enough. And you see this theme coming through. So he says, greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, these women who work hard in the Lord. Uh, Tryphena and Tryphosa, the names mean dainty and delicate, um, but they were obviously not too dainty and delicate to roll up their sleeves and to get involved. Um, and again, greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Um, he talks as well at more than one place in this list of names about fellow workers. Um, and so he's saying that, that serving God is something which is worthy of, um, of high honor, and serving through, um, through the church is something that is, is worthy of, of honor. And of course, Paul, in laying out um, Romans, has been, uh, has been very much uh, following and opening up to us the life of Jesus who came to serve. And so this is a, an honoring of those who, in Jesus' name, um, will serve. And uh, it's important to, to recognize that. You know, Paul has a list here of 28 names. Um, and if I was to attempt to list the names of everyone in Broadway Baptist Church who serves God through the life and ministry of the church, um, firstly, it would take a long time. It'd be a lot longer than 28 names. Um, and secondly, I'd be in danger of forgetting somebody and missing somebody out. So I just want to say, if you serve God in any way through the life of the church, if you serve God in Jesus' name, then that is something which is worthy of great honor. And whether it's a, a public noticeable role or something quiet and hidden that, that maybe no one ever notices, God notices and God honors you. So thank you for the service that you offer to and through God's people. And maybe, maybe afterwards, maybe sometime this week, you could think about just finding a way to thank, finding a way to honor somebody who serves God in the life of our church, maybe by saying to them in person or sending them a message or a note or, or whatever it is, and maybe particularly people who wouldn't normally receive um, honor and thanks and just look for a person who you could choose to honor in that way. And as he honors people who, works hard, who work hard in the church, as, as part of that, he, he wants to honor those who, um, who stand up in the midst of hardship and continue to serve and continue to keep Jesus at the heart of their focus. So in verse 10, he says, greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. His fidelity to Christ has stood the test. I wonder what the test was. I wonder what torpedo has maybe ripped through the hull of um, Apelles' life, and, um, and he's, he's found himself with all sorts of difficulties, but yet he has continued to stay faithful to Christ. Um, and it's no surprise that Paul would honor staying faithful to Christ in the midst of trouble and hardship, because he has stuff to say about that um, at different places in Romans. And in, in chapter 8, um, he says that, um, uh, that trouble and hardship and persecution and famine and nakedness and danger and sword, that none of these things can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, and among us, there are, there are people for whom this is true, for whom there is trouble, for whom there is hardship, for whom there is pain and difficulty, whether that's, um, whether that's about health for yourself or for family, whether that's um, about uh, relationships or um, all, sorts of, all sorts of difficulties. And I'm aware among us that um, there are lots of people who are going through um, difficult and challenging things 
um, right now, and there will inevitably be others who I am completely unaware of. But when that torpedo, torpedo comes and rips through your hull, then know this, know that the love of Christ is there for you and with you in the midst of everything that you are going through. And as Paul says here, greet, uh, greet Apelles, um, whose fidelity has stood the test. When you're going through this stuff, God notices, and God is with you, and God honors you. So, Paul here honors this, uh, this hugely uh, diverse um, bunch of people, and, uh, and he, honors, uh, he honors two um, people who work hard in the church and in the cause of the gospel. And there's one group of people that he uh, particularly honors, and that's women. It's really quite striking in this passage how Paul honors women. Um, and Paul often gets a bit of a, uh, bit of a, bad, a bad rap here that he's, he's often seen as um, uh, or has been portrayed as, as misogynist, as sexist, as, uh, as anti-women. Um, and I think often that, that impression has, has come through imposing our 21st century cultural values into a first century context, because I think Paul properly understood was actually quite radical in the way that he included women um, in his day. But he, he starts off at the start of the chapter, <clears throat> Denise read this for us, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon in the church um, at Kentry. Um, I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need for you, for she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. There's, some, there's something... There's something important in any list about who you name first. Um, so, if somebody was, was standing up here giving a speech and um, uh, the Lieutenant Governor was, uh, was sitting there where Denise is sitting and the, uh, uh, the Chief Minister was sitting there where John is sitting, then their speech would begin, um, Your Excellency, Chief Minister, ladies and gentlemen and something significant about who you honor first. And something significant here too, that Paul is, first of all, in this list, honoring this woman, Phoebe. And he tells, her, he tells us that she was a deacon in the church, so she had a, um, a role of leadership. Um, he tells us that she was a, um, a benefactor, and she'd been of help to, um, to many people. Uh, we think that Probably Phoebe was the person who delivered Paul's letter to, uh, to the Romans, um, and you can pick that up by the way that he's asking, asking them to receive her. You know, he's written this letter, and then he's saying, and, and receive Phoebe in a manner um, that, is, uh, that is worthy of, uh, of what, she, uh, what she has done and what she gives. Um, and so, uh, so he's entrusting this really significant letter that is written uh, to this woman, Phoebe. Um, and the person who delivers the letter would typically go to the different little house churches in, in Rome, um, and she would read it out to them, um, and maybe also just um, answer any, uh, any questions or points of understanding on what Paul had to say uh, in that letter. So, he's honoring, first of all, uh, Phoebe. Um, and then, uh, we met earlier a moment ago this married couple, Priscilla and Aquila. Um, Priscilla is the woman, Aquila is the man, and he's naming the woman first. Um, and maybe she had the more um, significant ministry uh, between them. Um, and then in verse 7, he, he says to greet uh, Andro Andronicus and Junia, outstanding among the apostles. So, he, here are two people who he is um, naming as, uh, as apostles. Um, and there's been, there's been debate uh, over, uh, over the years 
uh, about this, this name, Junia, and, and some people have said, no, it must be a mistake, it must be a man, um, and the name will be Junias. Um, and actually, it's very clear in the Greek that it is a, it is a, a woman, um, and actually, there's nowhere in, in recorded uh, literature that has a man's name called Junius anyway, so it really, really doesn't quite fit. Uh, but very early on in the, uh, in the church, Junia was recognized uh, as an apostle, as one who was, was sent out to share Jesus uh, with others and to, to have a role in building up um, his church. And so, uh, one of the early church fa fathers, John Chrysostom, um, wrote this. Uh, he, uh, he, he said, Oh, how great is the devotion of this woman that she should be even counted worthy of the appellation of apostle. Um, and you, you, start to, you start to get the the, the sense that Paul is actually making such a big focus here on women that, that maybe, maybe it's not just an accidental thing. Maybe there's something uh, deliberate here. Um, I find it helpful sometimes to see things graphically. So, um, here is a list of all of the, the people that, that Paul gave general greetings to uh, in this list where he said, say hi to um, such and such a person. Uh, but there are also people who he's, he has greeted particularly in relation to their leadership role. So, the general greetings, you see there's more men than women, um, and then you come to the leadership roles, um, and you see him greeting apostles, one male, one female, deacon stroke minister, um, one female, um, leader stroke patron, one uh, female, house church leaders, one of each. Um, fellow workers in Christ, um, one female, two males, people who worked hard in the Lord, all females. And this idea that Paul and the letters of Paul are down on women is just not true, and, and his writings have often been used um, very poorly over the years. But I, I think one thing that is clear in the way that Paul talks of and honors women here in, uh, in this passage is that there, there is no role, there is no ministry in God's church that is not open uh, to, uh, to women. So, how do we, how do we just begin to, uh, to put this in practice? Paul lists 28 people um, who he is greeting, who he is honoring. What do they have in common? Something that they have in common is that they, they have all encountered the gospel of Jesus Christ, and they have all received the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes, there are all sorts of things that are vastly different among them. And among us, there are all sorts of things that are vastly different. We come from different backgrounds in all sorts of ways, different expectations, different political views, different types of work, different outlooks, and all sorts of things. But this is, this is the heart of it. This is what makes us family. We are one in Jesus. It's, it's about who saves you and who loves you. And where we have that in common, we have something very precious in common. Um, and then these 28 people that he, uh, that he listed, they are all vital servants on Team Jesus. Um, there was no one who was honored less because they had some sort of uh, menial role. Um, you know, Paul, Paul could have played the I'm the big shot apostle type of card, and he, and he didn't. The whole language is of um, fellow workers, and we are all servants of Jesus together. And among us, every single one of you is a vital servant on Team Jesus. And if we are a community living to make Jesus known, then we need all of us 
um, to serve and to, and to work um, for that cause. We are, we are a family, uh, but we are a family on a mission. We are part of a, a team sharing the, uh, the love and the goodness and the transforming power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Paul's who's who list is so different from uh, the, the sort of who's who that would have been common in Roman society that is than the sort of who's who that is common in our society. Um, he honors people who are different. He honors people who work hard. He honors people who the rest of society would say were second class. Do you know, when it, the, the early church, the first couple of centuries in the church was at, made up of two-thirds women um, and also had a very high proportion of slaves. Um, and neither of these are accidental because in Roman Greek society, these women were not considered to be important. They were often sort of viewed as the property of their husbands, and, and the gospel comes along and says, no, you are, you are precious and honored in your own right. Slaves, no rights whatsoever. Um, and, and the gospel comes along and says, if the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. So, how do we start to honor one another? How do we honor as Paul honors here? Um, I think it starts with noticing one another and with, uh, with sharing hospitality um, with one another. So, in, in, at, right at the start of his, his passage here, he, he talks about receiving, uh, receiving Phoebe in the Lord in a way worthy of His people. And um, in the message translation, verse 2 says, be sure to welcome our friend Phoebe in the way of the Master with all the generous hospitality we Christians are famous for. Wouldn't it be great if among us, if something that Broadway Baptist Church was famous for is generous hospitality? And not just hospitality to the people who are like us and easy for us to connect with, but hospitality for that full diversity of people that make up the family of God. But then there's an even easier way. That's, that's kind of from the start of the passage, generous hospitality. There's an even easier way for us to just just begin, just dip the toe in the water, just take the first step of honoring one another. Um, and it's right at the end of the passage that, uh, that we've been looking at. It's verse 16, and Paul says, greet one another with a holy kiss. So, just um, pucker up and turn to… no. Um, uh, Paul, Paul clearly didn't get the, um, the COVID protection memo. So, um, but… Yeah, it was culturally different, but the, the, the thing that's at the heart of that is greet each other warmly. Um, and let's be a church that makes a practice in Jesus' name. When we come together, such a simple thing, but such a powerful thing, greet each other warmly. And Paul makes this thing of honoring people who are not like him. So, can I suggest that this morning, before you leave, before you either slip out the door or before you talk to your, your friends who it's natural and easy to talk with, just speak to somebody that you don't normally talk to um, and just say hi to them. Um, if you don't know their name, just um, tell them your name and, uh, and ask them theirs, and just make even just the tiniest little connection, because we are to be people who honor one another in the name of Jesus. Just one more thing about this list of people that Paul honors. It's a, 
It's a small list. It's actually the biggest list of any of his letters, 28 people. Um, but there's a much bigger list of names to honour. And, and Paul references it elsewhere. He, um, he references it in, in Philippians, where he talks about people whose names are written in the book of life. And in Revelation, there are um, the book right at the end of the Bible, there are several mentions of the Lamb's book of life. You see, Jesus has a book, um, and your name is in it, because written in Jesus' book is everyone for whom Jesus died who has said yes to Jesus. And if, you, if you're not sure if your name is in that book, then know this, that Jesus loves you, that Jesus died for you, that there is no one who is beyond the love of Jesus, um, and that He will never turn away anyone who comes to Him. It's not waiting for some big sudden flash of uh, of inspiration or some sort of big spiritual experience. It's just saying yes to Jesus. Jesus, yes, you died for me on the cross. Jesus, yes, you died to forgive me. Jesus, yes, I want your forgiveness. Jesus, yes, I want you at the heart of my life. And Jesus, who loves you, who died for you, who's praying for you, he's <laughs> His hand is poised on a page of the Lamb's Book of Life. He's already done his part. He's died for you, and he's just waiting to write your name in. And the angels around are waiting to rejoice with Jesus when your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And for God's people, this is, this is the ultimate honor to have your name in the Lamb's book of life. And because of that great honor, then there is no dishonor in serving God in, within His church, whether in that, that's in ways that are obvious or in ways that seem menial. We are called to be people who, uh, who serve and who honor one another. And one day, one day in the presence of the angels, Jesus is going to crack open that book, and your name will be read out. And I wonder what words of honor you will hear Jesus speak over you. Maybe like Mary and Tryphena and Tryphosa, you will hear Jesus say, this one worked hard in the Lord. Maybe like... Um, um, I've forgotten their names now. <laughs> Maybe like Priscilla and Aquila. Um, you, will, you will hear Jesus saying, yeah, this, this one risked their life for me. This one gave everything, was all in for me. Maybe like Phoebe, you will hear Jesus say, yes, this one served me with the resources uh, that, they, uh, that they had maybe like some of the other names, you will hear Jesus say, yes, this one was a fellow worker in the cause of the gospel. There is no greater honor than to have your name in the Lamb's book of life and to hear Jesus say at the end of days, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's pray. <clears throat> Oh, thank you, Lord, that, that the people that you honor, that your, that your basis of honoring is not, um, it's not celebrity, it's not um, recognition, it's not, it's not human achievement. It's our response to your grace, to your love, to your offer of new life in Jesus. And I want to pray for anyone who has not said yes to Jesus. And I pray that you would give grace right now 
And maybe just in this moment, in, in a moment of silence, just say to Jesus, yes, yes. I receive your forgiveness. Yes, I want you at the heart of my life. Yes, thank you that you write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And Lord, like Paul, help us to be um, a people who honor one another in all of our diversity, to be this um, multicultural, multi-class, multiracial, multiracial, male, female, single, married, children, parents, group of people who in all of our diversity and all of our difference have this wonderful thing in common, that we have experienced the gospel, that we've experienced the grace of Jesus Christ, that we have received the Holy Spirit. So we are family. We know who loves us and who saves us. Help each one of us to be part of the work of, <laughs> of Team Jesus as we become a family on a mission, looking to share Jesus with others so that others too may have their names on the Lamb's Book of Life, so that others too may discover the honor that is to be had among God's people. <coughs> and to you, Lord, be all glory and honor. Maybe just finish praying with the words that Paul, Paul uses at the end of this passage. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that the, the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes through faith, to the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen.